But you know, the law is being used in order to achieve a political purpose which is not fair.
So my journey with Alex was a very, very simple and uncomplicated one. No, like all young people I come across in my work, <laughs> you fell into this person of calling Mrs. B, you heard and I oh, Mrs. B, everyone called Mrs. B. I actually tell them that they should call me Mama B or Bobo B. <laughs> I'm not their sister. <laughs> 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 but despite these age disparities between us, Alex never shied away from contacting me and making contributions where he thought these were necessary interventions. He never shied away from saying, ah, this be a pamanjazite. Let's do it this way, because I'm not, I'm, I was never a trained constitutional lawyer. I went to university in the 70s. We had no human rights law at universities at the time. We just learned constitutional law, but even then in a passing phase. So the nuances of constitutionalism are things that I'm learning from young people like Alex, and like all the other young human rights lawyers that uh, I work with. And the beauty with Alex is that he was able, even where you can see what they are, he was able to say it to you in such a way that you didn't even realize that you know you had made a big mess because he was also a diplomat. So that diplomacy made it very, very easy to really work with him because he was non-judgmental. He did not have the usual academic snobbery that uh, we see, present company excluded. <laughs> but he was so humble and sincere that you could only just take him Board. So, what do I think of Alex Makaisa, the lawyer that I interacted with outside his B and, uh, you know, as a uh, chilling as and when uh, he was in town? When I would have ideas and I would say, oh, we're thinking of doing this intervention, he was one of those that I immediately sent the draft. And like everyone has said, the answer would be there in a minute. Like he was just waiting for you. <laughs> and then you wake up the next day, the BSR is there. Like, this guy, I must speak to his wife and find out if he's performing his wifely duties. <laughs> As has been said by, uh, uh, you know, everybody who's spoken, Alex was a vital core in that <coughs> constitution-making process, which culminated in what we now have, which I consider a decent constitution. I know Lab Muma Dupu will disagree with that. <laughs> But uh, that's what I believe it is. And he was so passionate about that process, having lived through 19 constitutional amendments in our Lancaster House Constitution, that he and the team in COPAC were desperate to craft a constitution that could stand the rigors of time, that would withstand the constant mutilation that we saw in the Lancaster House Constitution. So what did they do? Of course, they had the Chapter 9, the Chapter 10, uh, 12 uh, 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 commissions, which basically were seen to be vital institutions to support democracy, the rule of law, and constitutionalism. And they believe very, very strongly that if you have strong 
independent institutions, democracy and constitutionalism would thrive. To make sure that those pillars are fully supported in the Constitution, they had elaborate appointment procedures. And our commissioners in our oversight or so-called oversight uh, 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 institutions uh, are supposed to be public. We're all supposed to participate. We're all supposed to forward names. And in, in the beginning, we all, of course, did, because we thought, yeah, it counts if you send a name. Then they put in, in Chapter 8, the judiciary and its support structure, which is the JSC. Again, elaborate appointment procedures were supposed to have 13 commissioners in the Judicial Service Commission who will superintend the appointment of judges, discipline, issues to do with justice, and even advise the government on issues uh, to do with the law and the constitution. And when you read our constitution, it, it looks great. You know, uh, the JSC is supposed to be very inclusive and representative there are supposed to be 13 commissioners, uh, <coughs> law professors represented, legal profession represented, public service represented. Uh, it's it's uh, so well put together that, in fact, when analysis is made of <laughs> constitutions, uh, I know that the opinion says, oh, you Zimbabweans, your appointment procedures are fantastic. You're, composition of the JSC is fantastic. And why is that? It is because we have lived through the mutilation of that Lancaster House uh, uh, constitution so many times that if you have a constitution that is amended 19 times in such a short space of time, you know that you want something that will withstand the test of time. And the assumption, of course, was that if you have those elaborate procedures of appointing, you know, persons to fill these oversight institutions, you will have the best men and women being appointed using those processes. And Zimbabwe is not short of those men and women of integrity. Sadly, most of them don't find their way into those oversight institutions. Sadly, when they do find themselves in those oversight institutions, I don't know what happens when one gets in there. I think there's a special <laughs> type of team that they give it. Because the most vocal of people become mute. I know that commissioners get discovery vehicles, and if you were driving a 323 before, it might be a bit difficult to speak out and then lose the brand new discovery. I don't know. As a result, we have people who go in there and they don't perform as was expected. We have a judiciary that sadly is no longer doing what the Constitution <coughs> says it must do. We have a constitutional court which has an obligation to give us certain rights in that Constitution, to interpret that Constitution to expand the democratic space, to ensure that the rule of law thrives, to ensure that the constitutionalism that Magaisa and others talked about uh, thrives. You all have just come out of the interpretations of constitutional amendments 1 and 2. You are all aware that that interpretation 
was not designed to give you and me the freedoms that the Constitution says we must have. It is not there to expand the democratic space. It is not there to ensure that constitutionalism thrives. It is not there to make sure that the rule of law thrives. It is not there to ensure that electoral reforms happen. And the question that I'll put to you is, what should we all do about this? <laughs> so Alex was exercising his mind on these issues. This is why he set up the CLC. So that there will be a space where we will discuss constitutionalism, where we will discuss where we went wrong, in the interpretation of the Constitution, because clearly it's an issue of interpretation. Uh, there can be no question that Amendments 1 and 2 are unconstitutional. There is no question that nobody who was an incumbent in office when those pieces of legislation were crafted uh, should not be in office right now. There is no question that there was a breach of a fundamental principle of the law where one should not be a judge in his own courts. If you are a party to the proceedings, you shouldn't sit. We've seen that judges sit and make decisions, and only just now in April, we've seen them seeking to benefit from the very decisions that they had made. And it is this type of thing that Alec and the constitution makers were seeking to ensure does not happen. So what can we do to ensure that Alex's legacy lives on? What can CLC do? Because I can tell you here now that it is not an accident that CLC was just set up just now now by Alex. <laughs> it was a premonition. He wanted his thoughts on constitutionalism to continue. I challenge each one of you present here to support the CLC. That support is not necessarily going to be because you, are, you have a legal mind. We have a problem in Zimbabwe in that we have uh, very few people who want to stand up and be counted. We have a lot of people who think that lawyers should do certain things. Just coming to CLC to say I'm available if you want to bring any litigation in my name, whatever it is, as long as it will advance constitutionalism, I'm available. I want to say to the business executives who knew Alex and who are here, those bold notes you don't know what to do with, <laughs> CLC can use them to advance constitutionalism. <laughs> we have a very sad culture in Zimbabwe where the business community, which is affected more than all of us, in the policy flip-flops that we experience every day. I think if we counted the statutory instruments that have come out this year, we'd probably run out of, 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 of figures because there are so many and you don't know whether the following morning they'll still be there. It is a tragedy that business, the corporates, who are affected the most by the, by the current failure of government is not supporting voices of reason where we are saying we have a supreme law of the land, it must be respected. We currently have legislation that is pending which is meant basically to shut down civil society. 
And that means there will be no funding coming from anywhere outside to support vital constitutional issues in the country. Constitutional issues that affect the corporates as much as they affect us, the ordinary people in the street. Business must come to the table and openly support civil society. <laughs> Business must understand that where there is the rule of law and constitutionalism and democracy, investment will follow and the economy will thrive. So I appeal to each one of you do not say, I don't have anything to offer, I don't know anything. Each one of us can contribute something to what, what Alex believed in. I'll also say that, you know, given the fact that the CLC is already there, <laughs> It, 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 it shouldn't be that difficult to do the right thing because the reason Alec was as prolific as he was is because God knew that his person had limited time. It will be a huge tragedy if that prolific writing and prolific expose of constitutional issues to the most, the smallest of us and the biggest of us in the simplest of terms stops. So part of the CLC, as I see it, is for them to go out there and simplify the constitution uh, for everybody in the way that Alex did. You could never read any Latin and legal jargon in Alex's words. You could never read anything he had written and not understand what he was communicating. And I believe that the CSC can continue doing that in his name as, 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 as he used to do. Many people question why we continue to litigate. And, and, and Alex would say, Sis B, they don't understand. We've always believed and very passionately that the only way you can criticize the judiciary and say it is not discharging its mandate is if you take cases before the judiciary. If you don't litigate, if you don't take cases to court, you'll have no basis whatsoever of saying they are captured or not doing the right thing. So I'll again encourage all of us, particularly at CLC, to look at public interest litigation, to continue litigation, take cases to the Constitutional Court, lose those cases, but you will have a body of literature on which we can build, because we'll be able to say to our Zuburus that we did something here is the body of evidence that we took matters to court. Yes, we lost. We didn't lose because we are lousy lawyers. We lost because we had lousy court judges. <laughs> and we should be able to do that. So anyone who has public interest litigation, go to CLC, where they find the money, is out. <laughs> I am pained that Alex did not live to see the kind of Zimbabwe that he wanted. I am pained that we have trampled on the good work that Copa did when they made that constitution and it became law in May 2013. I am pained that he left us as we approach an election 
that by all standards will be bloody. I am paid that those who are receiving advice from him will have nobody to turn to come the troubles that are ahead of us for 2023. It's my desire, hope, prayer, and belief that we can say to Alex, Saibwa, you are born, but we will remain united. We will work together as civil society, as lawyers, as, as, as though activists, young and old. Takuzwa in Indi I may not be able to fix to fit Alex's shoes, but I am here. I may not have this legal argument. But hey, if you get me and Fazi, we might make up an Alex. <laughs> <laughs> we should collaborate and work together in the way that Alex did. Yes. But of course, Alex was not just a scholar and someone who just talked constitutionality. With Alex, we could chill. We could uh, have a good time. He would never leave the house. Oh, Harare, you never leave Harare without seeing SISB. You know, uh, it's like uh, SISB Tiruguya, and he loved when he was coming, he tell me, SISB, you know my menu, and he loved me to cook. Okay, Saza, Nembor. And we would eat that. So he, he was not like, you know, these serious scholars who are always having their classes and uh, not knowing how to chill. He was an all rounder. Yeah. So, uh, Tendai, where's Musa? You should learn to be like Alex. <laughs> Come, let's chill. That's the best thing you can uh, 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 do for him. Break bread with your brothers and sisters. Forget about the age group. I mean, I'm telling you that I was finishing high school, last year of high school when he was born. So clearly, if I had been a naughty child, he could have been my son. <laughs> So to the Matalisa family, relatives, friends, my Matalisa, it's incredible that we all know so much about your person. And we don't know some of you. But through Alex, we know you. Through Alex, we are your friends. Through Alex, we are your relatives. Through Alex, we are your advisors. So please, feel free to continue nourishing this seed that he has sown. <clears throat> it can only germinate if we water it, if we pursue the dreams that he pursued. Yes, it's easier said than done because all of us are like, hey, I don't have I don't have time, but if Alex could find the time to help all of us here, why can't we find the time? So, yes, Neurombo, Tarasidira Tese. But let's keep together and let's hope that his body will be brought to Zimbabwe and that we'll be able to all participate and lay him to rest peaceful. Alex? Rest in peace, Saigua. Your legacy will live on in the body of work you left behind. Thank you. <laughs>